Welcome to Tuesday's Timescast. Today, we go to the midterm bellwether state of Ohio. Economically, for me personally, uh, is terrible. A new poll finds voters' top worry is still the economy. And from the media desk, news aggregators take a verbal beating but keep on hiring. One man's fair use is another man's outright theft. Jeff Zeleny reports from Ohio, where a new poll finds voters anxious about the economy and wary of Congress. The latest New York Times CBS News poll talks to Ohio voters who have economic anxieties on their mind as they make key decisions in this year's midterm election campaign. Economically, for me personally, uh, is terrible, as you might imagine. In 2008, Ohio was a key part of President Obama's winning strategy. His support today mirrors the national average largely because many voters believe he understands the needs of people like them. And I think they're trying, and I think they care. And, and that's, I didn't feel that from Bush. It's Congress that comes under much greater criticism. They've got to get the courage and sit down and act like grown-ups. One of the marquee contests of the midterm election campaign is the governor's race. Governor Ted Strickland, a Democrat, is trying to fight back a Republican challenge from John Kasich, a former congressman. I did vote for Mr. Strickland last time, and I just think Mr. Kasich is more enthusiastic and involved in trying to bring more jobs. In spite of the attention that the race has received, enthusiasm about voting is lower this year than in 2006. You know, being a Democrat, <laughs> it's not looking so good. The trend is much less pronounced among Republicans. I think this time we're more on the top. I'm more enthusiastic about getting control of government than I have been for years. Jenna, we just completed a new New York Times CBS News poll. What are some of the most interesting findings from the poll? It's a fascinating poll. We found that the economic situation in Ohio is far more dire uh, for individuals than it appeared to be for the rest of the country. We also found that the governor's race is much tighter than previously thought. What else have you found? Uh, perhaps uh, there are lots of uh, important House races here in this most swinging of swing states, uh, and of course an important Senate race that could be determinative in who uh, controls the Senate next year. We also saw that voters know very little about many of the candidates running for office, particularly Senate, and here we are five weeks away from Election Day. This gives uh, the candidates a chance to define each other in voters' minds. Not always to the positive, probably. <laughs> and finally, Brian Stelter and David Carr on the value of news aggregator websites like the Huffington Post. David, the Huffington Post is one of the most popular, most widely read uh, news sites out there, but, but not popular among everybody, and, and come in with some criticism. Yeah, not everybody's cheering this week. Len Downey, former editor of the Washington Post, called Huffington Post a parasite, which is not a very friendly term, and suggested they are making a living scraping the work of others. It's, in a sense, a fairly ancient argument, as old as the consumer web itself. And it'll continue as long as they keep scraping. And as long as, by the way, they do a really good job of it, right? It, it, do it better than anywhere else. Well, yeah, one man's fair use is another man's outright theft. What you have is you open up HubFost and you see the video you want, you see the snippet you want, and people aren't really clicking through. The other criticism uh, lately has been from Mayhill Fowler, one of the site's own, uh, I can't say employees because she's not paid, but I can say <laughs> one of their own contributors saying she can't do this for free anymore. Yeah, they fired back saying, how can you quit a job she, that you never had? Never had. She was a self-funded reporter who came up with Bittergate, in which she cut the president a private fundraiser, talking about uh, people clinging to guns. She had some other scoops, and she said, how does this, how, how can I not be paid for this? Right. This is beyond citizen blogging. I'm not sitting in a basement talking about my cats. I'm writing about issues of civic moment, and I'm working hard to do it. Why shouldn't I be paid? Right. And they didn't really have an answer for her, yet at the same time, they're hiring reporters. Yeah, one of the things she pointed to was the hiring of Howard Feynman mm -hmm. from Newsweek, who's, you know, a, a very major pundit and writer and probably will get a pretty penny from them. Uh, Peter Goodman, who works at the New York Times, was hired there as well. I think part of what's happening here is the, the so-called old media and new media are uh, slowly marching toward each other. Uh, mainstream media is doing more aggregation, new media is hiring more reporters and financing more journalism to the point where I think, you know, if you open up your iPad and, 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 and look in, 
You're not going to be able to tell old, new me old media from new media. It's all just going to be media. Join us again tomorrow for another edition of Timescast. Thank <laughs> you.